Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Rodriguez Carter. Welcome back to Madison Bell. And today we're going to talk about something that's dear heart to uh, people. Some people don't like to discuss this, and some people would like to get out and open. So we're going to talk about board and train. Is it good or is it not good for you and your dog? see more videos from us like subscribe and comment we would like to continue making more videos to help you out with what you're doing with your dog so support us by subscribing to our channel so that we can continue to make more great videos with dog training and to get you on your way to where you're trying to be thanks all again. right so let's get into it let's talk about board and train and is it good for you and your dog and the pros and cons of board and train and we're going to discuss in here uh, we're going to have one situation where a dog trainer actually uh, gets arrested for neglecting the dog. And uh, this is my disclaimer. And uh, he later then uh, harms himself. He commits suicide once he's charged with animal neglect. So I want to get that out the way. So if you don't want to hear about that, it's probably not a video you want to talk about. But we're going to talk about the truth, the dark side, and the goods of board and train. So... Let's get into pros. So if someone is doing pro, uh, uh, boarding train, uh, you probably can sleep good at night if you know that they have been a kennel master. And what I mean by that, kennel masters are the people who run for, work for law enforcement. They work for kennel clubs. They work for shelters and rescues and they manage the dogs in kennels. And what they learn is they learn how to keep sanitation levels great for the dogs. They learn how to exercise the dogs in between uh, being in a the kennel. They learn how to weight management the dog to make sure the dog is not losing weight or gaining too much weight. And they also learn, um, you know, just in general, like CPR and first aid for dogs. So they get that whole grip of things. And normally if you go, I'm going to say if you go to a good boarding uh, dog training facility or trainer, they have kennels and they have a person who's designated to do all those things. They've, they've been training for it, you know, and they've been doing it a long time. So you can rest assured that your dogs are going to get looked after. The bad part on that is that you have dog trainers who do board and train so they can increase the influx of price of the training and the dogs don't receive the proper kennel management they need when they're in the custody of the trainer. They just go there, get treats, and go right back into a cage. So on average, when a dog trainer is training a dog, on average, the max they can train a dog is two hours a day. So they can train a dog, you know, an hour uh, in the morning, an hour in the afternoon. We're talking pet dogs. We're not talking working dogs. Working dogs, you can train them around the clock. It doesn't matter when you do it. You can do it. But we're talking pet dogs that have the mental capacity to get exhausted very fast, wore out, and anything above three hours a day, you're wearing the dog out. When I say three hours, don't think this is all done at the same time. The dog may get trained in the morning time for an hour and in the afternoon for an hour. That leaves 22 other hours for your dog in the custody of the trainer. So... What happens in those 22 hours? Uh, do they go out and run the parks? Do they, are they hanging out? Are they doing things fun? Or are they just in a kennel for 22 hours? That's the thing you have to, you have to think about. So uh, majority how a decent kennel would run, uh, your dog would go out in the morning. He would get his kennel clean as well. Um, he will um, not be fed. So don't expect your dog to get fed when they're in this uh, facility because they don't feed the dogs while they're training. They give them treats. They'll eat at the end of the day, maybe around 5 p.m. So your dog won't eat, and then your dog is going to go train. Their kennel is going to get cleaned by somebody, and then they're going to get put back up. Now, if, I, if it's one trainer, I, I, I would say 
three dogs per one trainer because one dog is going to already accumulate in a week. You're looking at two hours a day times seven is 14 hours of dealing with the dog alone. So you got the dog going out for two, go to train for two hours a day, plus they get to go out and relax and run around and have fun for two hours. So that's four hours. So that kind of leaves 20 other hours. Again, we're still not, you know, killing those hours. The dogs are still in the kennel. So once you get past that phase, um, the kennel master is going to weigh your dog. So they will weigh the dog like once a week or every other day or seven days, uh, every seventh day or something like that. And your dog, if he was 85 pounds and he drop down to 80 pounds we're not really worried but we're concerned we just want to watch it um, but if the dog goes from 80 to 70 pounds we have a big problem someone should have caught that when the dog was probably about 80 pounds 82 pounds they should have caught that and said hey what's going on does he have a parasite is he nervous is he you know is he stressed we need to figure this out so in the realm of that you know I see trainers that have 50, I mean 15 dogs and, and they're the only trainer. So I don't know if you do the math on hours I just showed you, two dogs is it's going gonna, it's gonna to eat up eight hours a day for a trainer out of 24 hours. Three dogs, you're looking at 16 hours a day because those dogs have to go out, play, eat, and everything else besides training. So if you have seven, eight dogs, that's 56 hours that the dog, the handler has to be with the dog, train the dog, clean the kennels. It's not, it's impossible. It's impossible. So with that said, you shouldn't, you know, see where your dog is living. See where they're going to be. Ask how many hours a day they're going to be training, you know, and, and how many dogs are going to be playing because it, the living space is important. The, the, the kennel has to be sanitized at least once a day. At least once a day even if you use you know common bleach one day you shouldn't use bleach every day you I mean bleach is like a once a week type thing you should have a uh, desanitizer to desanitize your kennel that's not something that's toxic to the dog or because if, if dogs start breathing in bleach they'll start bleeding through the mouth and the nose so you don't want that toxic bleach in there all the time so uh, you need someone that specializes in uh, you know, knows about those parasites, how to clean them, how to kill, um, cure them, uh, dog weight loss, dog weight management, food habits, uh, different things like that because that's what the kennel master has to do is make sure the dog is maintaining their weight, they're not, um, they're living in a sanitation place, and then they can be treated for minor scrapes and bruises if they need that. And a lot of trainers don't look into the kennel master part. They just look at, I'm going to board a dog, put them in a crate. This is the first mistake. Because if you're training a dog and they're in a crate for 18 hours a day and they're laying in poop and pee, you're going to have a big problem. You're going to have a major problem. So in this one, you're going to see he takes the dog and he trains the dog and the dog loses like, I don't know, 20 pounds. The owner comes to pick up the dog. She goes to the police. She calls the news. They shut him down. He gets arrested. And then while he's um, waiting to go to you know, court for all this, he ends up killing himself. So he literally loved dogs. I think it's something he wanted to do. Uh, but he didn't have all the proper knowledge and information that he needed. And I'll let you guys check it out right now. And this is, this is the video right here. That has a lot of pet owners asking questions. A dog is barely able to stand up after his owner says she trusted a trainer to care for him. This is a picture of Duncan when his owner dropped him off healthy and weighing 90 pounds. Seven weeks later, Duncan is frail. You can see his ribs. He lost 30 pounds. That is a third of his body weight. 11 Lies Caitlin Ross has the story of Duncan's fight for survival all new at six. Come here. Mm. Abigail can't stop kissing her dog Duncan. 
When she picked him up Sunday, she didn't think he would survive. I actually collapsed on the ground, just crying my eyes out. Duncan had been at kinder care in Dalton, Georgia for seven weeks when she met the owner to get him back. We um, called the police and I did not say anything to them until the police arrived. I was unable to. I was just so distraught. Police charged Stephen Kinder with four counts of animal cruelty for how they found Duncan. Abigail says he was fat and happy when she dropped him off for a four-week obedience class in December. He weighed 90 pounds. She says after the initial four weeks were up, Kinder told her they needed to extend his training again and again. They asked to keep him for another 10 days. I said, absolutely not. I'm going to come pick him up. She's not the only one. Four dog owners have filed criminal complaints against him. Abigail says the abuse her dog suffered is unfathomable. He is stained yellow from laying in his feces. Kinder didn't pick up the phone when we called, but told the NBC station in Chattanooga yesterday he was innocent. I am not happy with the condition of the dog as well. But the owners did not provide enough food. We did provide our own food for them. He said since Abigail posted about Duncan on Facebook, he's been getting death threats. Death threats against us, our dogs, um, people wanting to come to our house and destroy things. But Abigail didn't say any of those things. In fact, she says she has nothing to say to him at all. I have nothing to say. There's no excuse. Just today, Abigail registered a nonprofit to help other people in her position. She says the animal cruelty laws in Georgia are too lax, and she wants to strengthen them and protect other dogs like Duncan. Cheryl? I imagine she'd have a lot of support in doing so, Caitlin. So, Thanks so much. Getting back to what I was saying, having proper kennel management knowledge, uh, the kennel should be at least, I'm going to say at a minimum, you know, they should be at least uh, six six to uh, eight feet long, at least six feet high, and at least about uh, five feet wide. Like they need to be in a, a space where they can exercise. They can walk around and, and uh, they can uh, have a place to use, use a bathroom that they won't lay in if that happens. They should not be in a crate. That's the worst thing that you could do when you're uh, boarding dogs. Um, and I know a lot of uh, customers think that their dog is going to be training for, you know, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's just not the case. It's impossible. So what trainers do that they, when they get a dog they need to train that does not have a high food drive or they want to escalate training, they will hand feed the dog. So they will take bits of the dog's dog food or treats or whatever, and they'll feed that to the dog. They're not going to give them any dog food. So your dog is not going to be eating like they were at home. They're just going to be eating throughout the handlers, the trainer's hand. And this puts a lot of stress on a lot of dogs because imagine if, you know, if I gave you, if, 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 I, if I fed you a hand of rice every day, you're going to lose like 10 pounds versus giving you a whole big bowl of rice to eat at one setting. So a lot of trainers will go extreme on this. And when you look at weight management from dealing with dogs, if a dog loses five pounds, it takes almost three to four weeks to gain those back through proper nutrition if you're giving the dog the food back. If the dog loses anywhere from 10 pounds, that could take up to um, at least six to eight weeks. It could take up to six, I'm going to say between six and 12 weeks to gain back those 10 pounds. And if the dog loses 20 pounds, this could take up to six months. So there's a big difference. When a dog drops weight, they drop a pound. It takes two weeks to get that pound back, unless you're rushing and you're giving them fatty foods. But if you're giving them a proper diet, it could take almost a week to get that pound back. So every time they lose a pound, add a week. So if they lose five pounds, you might have, you know, you're like four weeks of getting them back to where they need to go. Kiddo management teaches you that. So you don't, you're not thinking, well, he lost five pounds. I'll just double feed him a week before the owner comes. You're not going to get that weight back in a week. And that's what hurts a lot of uh, people who do board and training. They have no knowledge of, of doing kennel master work. And if a dog is left in a crate um, for extended period of times, they're going to get stressed. They're going to get nervy. They're going to start uh, losing weight, just like anybody else that when you're, you know, you're nervous and you're, you get skittish, you're going to just be paranoid. You're not going to eat as well. Your, mind, your body's not going to maintain those calories, and you're just going to keep plummeting down to drop weight. Now, a good system where if you had um, a trainer and a kettle master working together, they will sacrifice training to make sure the dog maintains their health. They won't just let the dog have extreme diarrhea, 
uh, vomiting and uh, weight loss because they don't want to give back a refund or they don't want to notify the owner. They just want to muscle through this and then hope they can put 10 pounds on a dog in three days, which is impossible. So dogs won't lose um, mass. It, it takes them for a dog to lose five pounds um, in, a, in like this. It's going to take them about 14 days. So you're looking at that time frame. So in 28 days, they could be down to 10 pounds. I could have lost 10 pounds in less than a month. So that's the thing with kennel management. It's important for you to know that. Know that your dog is being half fed. And then the other thing is dog food. A lot of board and train facilities will add in the cost of the dog food into the, into the invoice, but they will fail to go get the proper food because there's almost like a thousand different type of dog foods and every dog is on something different and sometimes you just can't find it at your walmart or whatever and they'll just put them on their dog food and the dog gets extreme diarrhea and they become they start dropping pounds so that's the other problem when we talk about kennel management have the they should have the owners drop off at least four bags three bags that'll last them throughout the time they're with them so they don't have to go and change the dog's diet so those are some of the things with kennel management i think it's important that i mean you have some dogs you got to put in board and train because they're so distracted when they are at their home that it's hard for a trainer to come over there for one hour a day and change your dog i mean if you're looking for a drastic change in your dog you, you need a board and train because they're going to take the dog, it's going to be out of distractions, and they're going to be able to focus and do training with the dog. So kennel management and, um, and training go hand in hand. And then, you know, it's just one of those things, like I said, I mean, if you're not familiar with that, you need to do a lot of researching on dog weight loss, uh, things that can make a dog get sick, um, dog's nervousness system, them getting skittish, them being restless and stressed out. Stressed out is the most important one. You want to focus in on that. Um, and then you won't have a thing because when a customer drops off a dog to a client and they pay X dollars and then they come back to get the dog and the dog can do all these wonderful things, but they're 20 pounds lighter, they're not going to be happy with you. Or if the dog um, has these problems and you don't notify the owner, that they're having stomach issues and they need to go to the vet. These are some things that can hurt trainers. So I kind of understand where he was coming from. I guess he was thinking he could put the weight back on the dog really quick, uh, but he was unable to do that. So in turn, she also got the dog back and she said that he really didn't learn anything. So that was another uh, big twist into it. So, and I can see why the dog really wasn't functioning to learn himself because he was losing weight and he was stressed out. So. Uh, dog trainers need to put the dog's health above the, the training and some dogs can be free, free fed and some dogs can be hand fed for a little time. The max a trainer should hand feed a dog in training is three days at a time. Like if they did it for three days, then they didn't do it for a week and they did it for three more days. That's the max. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that they will fast the dog also for about, I'm going to say, three days if the dog has a really low food drive. They, and fasting means they're not gonna feed the dog for at least 40, uh, 72 hours. And then they'll start feeding the dog and training. So a lot of people don't know that either. That's another trick that dog trainers do to, to get the dog to focus quick, get the dog to respond. And meanwhile, the dog is dropping weight while they're doing this. So that's another thing that can, um, that can help that hurt that situation. So again, you know, dog training is, um, it's, it's a lot that's involved, and when people are constantly uh, putting dogs on, taking 10 dogs, taking 15 dogs, every time they take a dog on, that's one less, that's one less hour or 30 minutes they can spend with your dog. It's impossible for a trainer to have 15 dogs, manage all their kennels, get their time out to play, and train every one of them every day. It's impossible. On, on, on reference, if, you have, if a trainer had one dog, it would take him about 60 hours to get that dog to learn those commands and then proof that command. And proofing means making the command solid. Like if you taught a dog to do a command that they won't do anything else but that command, that means proofing. And I see a lot of products that are out there that are saying two weeks of dog training for $2,500 or four weeks for dog training for $2,400. And that 
and together, if if you add that up, even if they train the dog for that two hours or three hours a day, they're not even they're barely coming close to the sixty hours for the four week program. Two week program, they're not even getting close. So the dog won't be proofed at all. So you're just you're really just throwing your money down the drain. Um, if they're gonna prove the dog, they need it at a six weeks or eight weeks or even a ten week program, to twelve weeks. This is actual getting something that you need versus a two week or a four week. I mean, that's gonna be an introduction of imprinting the commands. But they, when you get the dog, they're not gonna be solid on it. So that's another thing that that hurts trainers is they they see other trainers and they say, well, if I can put out four dogs every four weeks and I take in, you know, 20 dogs, they add up that money and, they, and they're just turning over dogs, but they're not really turning over a good product. They're just, you know, the dog may sit and stay for the owner for a little bit, but then after a while it just goes away because the dog wasn't proofed. So that's another thing you run into. Um, so board and train all at all, like I said, it depends on who's doing it, uh, their experience in kennel master, um, and how many dogs they take in and, uh, what kind of product they, they sold you. So it all depends on those matters. And then again, I mean, you, you know, again, you, you're going to have to, if you don't feel like the person is, is just like they're keeping your dog in a crate in a garage and the garage doesn't have any kind of functional AC unit system uh, or heating system, then you probably want to stay away from that because that can lead to a lot of things. The dog can get hypothermia, the dog can have a stroke from the heat, uh, the dog can uh, the dog can urinate on themselves, and when they do that and they lay in piss for hours, they begin to get rashes, they get nervy, they start losing skin, they get strep, they get a whole lot of things. So they get a lot of issues for laying in their own pee and poop for a long time. So that's another matter that could come back to hurt uh, the trainer if they're not able to rotate the dogs, get them out of the crates, clean the crates, and keep things moving on a regular basis and keep the dog from being stressed. So. A stressful dog is not going to learn anything, and if they're sitting in a crate for 18 hours a day, they're going to be stressed. So that's pretty much uh, my focus on the whole board and train thing. If you're considering that and you're thinking about that, there's a lot of details in board and train that are not out there, like hand feeding and fasting dogs and, you know, dogs getting uh, uh, a kennel aggressive, kennel cough. Kennel aggressive is basically your dog is in a kennel next to another dog and they're fence fighting. They're constantly fence fighting. And then your dog wasn't aggressive before then and now you get them home, they wanna fight every dog. So that's another issue with kennels. So you just gotta look at all those aspects. And if you feel like board and train is still the way you wanna go, then all you could do is try to pick the best person that you think is gonna manage your dog, the best person that's going to give you the honest opinion about what's going on with them when they have the dog, and I think you'll be all right. Because if, you, if you're getting vague answers and training is always getting pushed back because you know they can't get to you, there, there could be other issues. So just wanted to get that out there to you guys and, and, and like to do a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you guys about uh, board and train and what are the goods and what are the bads. And board and train, I'm gonna say it's not bad because Again, the dog trainer gets access to your dog 24 hours a day, and they can, they can shape a behavior with your dog you can't do an hour of going to do, uh, per se, training with, you know, with one owner. So um, that, is, that is the gist of it. And if you guys have any questions about board and training, you're welcome to reach out to me. And, and if you have something you're looking at with a company or something and you want to ask questions, you can reach out to me and I can tell you exactly what your dog's going to be doing, how long they're going to be doing it, and probably what the living situations are going to be. So you guys have a good one. Thank you all again for watching my page. Like and subscribe. That's very important to me. And uh, I'll have more dog training videos coming out real soon. You guys have a good one. Before we get started, like my video, subscribe to my channel so that we can continue making great content for you and your dog.